Boys, we got another hand cannon, because why not, right? Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Lumina. This is the exotic hand cannon that has been discussed, talked about, and it essentially is Rose fully evolved. Rose is actually the legendary version of this weapon without all the cool stuff, which we of course will get into, but we will be individually reviewing Rose tomorrow. But for today, we are gonna be talking about Lumina, guys, because yes, it is the first of its kind. It is a support weapon. Now, before we get into this, first and foremost, a quest guide is listed below. I do not have a quest guide out myself. Normally, I have to make the decision between either a review on day one or a quest Got. I think most of you normally just want the review, so we just kind of go with the review and I miss out on all the quest guide views. But for those that are wondering how to get this weapon, quest guide down below, go check it out. With that being said, let's take a look at this weapon. First up, intrinsically, it comes with the intrinsic perk, Noble Rounds. Kills with this weapon leave behind remnants. Absorbing a remnant converts your next hip fire shot into an ally seeking Noble Round and partially refills the magazine. Now, that noble shot that you shoot out after your teammate or your ally, it's moving, man. I mean, it's humming, boys. Now, the weapon also comes with Chamber Compensator for that increase in stability, as well as recoil control, accurized rounds for that bump in range, and we'll, of course, get into the stats. But the trait here is called Blessing of the Sky. Using a noble round on an ally heals them and grants both you and them a weapon damage bonus for a short duration. So essentially, guys, you get Get a kill. Upon getting the kill, you'll see a white orb. That white orb tracks to you, similar to how something like Soul Devour on Dorn works. Now, upon picking up that white remnant, you now have a noble round, which will last indefinitely. You can swap to multiple weapons. That noble round is not going away unless you either die or use it. Now, when you want to actually use it, you look toward a teammate and you hip fire. Now, you want to kind of be looking in their general direction. Like, you can't just hip fire in a no man's land and expect it to actually go to your ally, you gotta hip fire someone accurately. You don't have to have your sights on them, but you gotta be at least, I would say, within three to four meters of them. If you can like draw a box around your ally. Now the moment that that noble round touches your ally's ball sack, you will now get the blessing of the sky, which will last for 10 seconds. Now before we get into the weapon damage buff, first up, it heals you, we're guessing somewhere between 120 health to maybe 150. We might be overestimating, but it's a pretty substantial amount of health that you get back. Now, this is not the person that shoots the Noble Round. Again, it is only the person that is receiving the Noble Round that gets the health benefits, but both players get a weapon damage buff. Now, this actually changes depending on PvE or PvP. The buff that you get inside of PvP is approximately 19%, like 18.5 to 19%. So essentially what it does for something like Lumina being a 150 round per minute hand cannon, it raises its crit value from 68 to 81, and it's body shot damage value from 43 to 51, thus allowing this 150 round per minute hand cannon to two crit, one body shot. So it doesn't necessarily drop our time to kill as we're still around 0.8 seconds, but it adds a nice level of forgiveness. Now, what it does for other weapons, yeah, it's when we start seeing some nasty stuff, boys. Sturm with Sturm Overcharge hits 195 per crit. So essentially any guardian seven resilience or less will die in one shot. La Minart, I'm pretty sure La Minart could possibly kill all the way up to max resilience. Probably gonna be a little bit less, but just know, Blessing of the Sky, when combined with someone using Luminarch, will be able to one-shot most opponents. You can also do things like body shot with aggressive frame snipers, one crit, one body with something like Thorn. Last word is just absolutely scary with it. The list goes on. Weapons get way more potent when this buff is flying around. Now, for PvE, as nasty as this buff is in PvP, this is where we actually get to see it fully amped up. So the buff inside of PvP was about 19%. This actually is 35% in PvE. Guys, that is a ginormous buff. This stacked on top of all of our other buffs, Melting Point, Tethers, Tractor Cannon. I mean, there's a load of other things we can use this with. All of those things combined together is going to make bosses in their health pools a total joke. And considering that you can stack up to five Noble Rounds, this will enable an entire raid team to receive this buff. So you can imagine before a damage phase, everyone stopping, the guy with Noble Rounds just fires into all of his teammates. Everyone now has a plus 35% buff to their weapons and let the damage commence. This is going to become a main weapon for many 
fire teams. Now, some questions that I had here recently, how did this weapon work with certain builds, specifically Benevolent Dawn on the Warlock class? Does it proc this subclass perk? Yes, it does. So if you happen to be a Weller Radiance Warlock and you wanna just go full out support class, Lumina can hands down be that weapon for you. And I wasn't on my Warlock, but we will be putting a build together for this one. But from what Les was telling me, he was saying that after proccing Benevolent Dawn with something like Lumina and then reprocking it again with something like Divine Protection, immediately gave his grenade back. So literally proccing it twice back to back like that instantly gave his grenade back. So you can keep proccing things over and over again, cycling them through between this exotic weapon and Divine Protection there. And the entire time, your job is just keeping your teammates alive because proccing both of those things together, you're obviously keeping someone alive. So yes, guys, this exotic weapon has everything I think you can ask for, especially for my PvE guys. I was concerned going into this, considering that it was really the first support weapon that Bungie has ever made, that it just wasn't going to pan out, that it was just going to be garbage. But after seeing this, this opens up everything in terms of like true RPG builds. You can imagine that down the line, we'll eventually get weapons for like Titans, that the more damage you do, the tankier you get, or the more aggro you draw from your enemies. It's things like that that are eventually on the horizon. And after experiencing Lumina today, that tells me that that direction, that RPG direction that Bungie has talked about is definitely in Destiny's future. Now, back to PvP. And I know I'm kind of like jumping around here. I just wanted to go over this weapon specifically in terms of its buffs and what it does. Hands down, a very nasty weapon in PvE. But let's talk about it in PvP. How does it perform by itself? Just as a hand cannon in terms of its lethality and considering how much competition it has in that exact slot. You got things like Last Word, you got Thorn, you got Awestringer, Ace of Spades. Hell, there is a lot of stuff in that one slot. There's got to be a damn good reason to use Lumina over all those weapons. Lumina is not a bad hand cannon, but yes, I would choose many other hand cannons inside PvP over it in 1v1 scenarios. Now, team environments is where this weapon really starts to shine, and you see it right here, and I actually started wrapping my mentality around what this weapon is, especially when it comes to PvP. Me and my teammate are both using Lumina here. Les and I are pushing off of each other. We're healing each other back and forth, and we're keeping each other alive. Now, the reason why I said I had to wrap my head around this mentality is because we were trying to actually pre-buff each other before entering gunfights. So essentially, we were trying to get into situations where I would pre-buff him. We would then enter a gunfight with our Luminous now doing extra damage. Now, you can do this, of course, but I would not advise this pre-buff strategy with a team full of Luminous. Yes, Lumina does get a nice 19% buff there, but it does not drop our time to kill substantially here. And there's many other weapons, whether it's Thorn, whether it's Last Word, whether it's Luminarch or other one-shot kill weapons that could greatly benefit from this buff, especially in certain scenarios inside a competitive where pre-buffing would be advantageous. But the mentality that I really feel like is the only way to make Lumina work inside a PvP, truly make it work, is to still treat it like a support weapon. Health and regeneration of your allies come first, the buff and everything else comes afterwards. As in, don't waste a noble round on a teammate just to give them a 19% buff. It is more advantageous to keep them alive and keep them in gunfights than it is for you to give them a pre-buff for most scenarios. And again, you could sit there and engage as many gunfights as you want while aiming down sights and never use a single noble round. It is only when you stop and hip fire do you actually use up that noble route. So just full circle to what I'm saying here, guys. Make healing and support priority when using this weapon. Don't try to treat this weapon the way we treat Thorn. Thorn is an extremely lethal weapon, especially once you proc Soul Devour. Lumina, on the other hand, does not reach that level of lethality. So if you are a Lumina user on a fire team, your number one priority should be keeping your teammates alive and keeping yourself alive. I feel like we're almost going back to like old school RPG games, right? Like old school MORPGs, healer, you gotta stay alive, man. You can't be putting yourself on the front lines. But that's essentially what ended up happening today, is that every time I got this buff going, I would immediately jump in there head first, which of course we're just trying to get clips. But really, really guys, the best way to use this weapon, if you're gonna bring it inside of Crucible, especially in something like competitive, is to truly adopt that support role. So guys, that is our review for Lumina. I'm very interested to see how this weapon is gonna perform inside the current meta, how people are gonna 
utilize it. I think it's a very skilled weapon. If you are a brain dead AP boy, do not pick up Lumina. This is not your weapon. Now for Rose, guys, yes, like I said, we will be reviewing this weapon tomorrow as this one is also present in our kinetic slots and we could possibly see more playtime of this weapon over Lumina inside of PvP. Well, fellas and ladies, hey, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.